say that I'm mad. This disease has sharpened my senses. Not destroyed. Not dulled. It starts with an old man. An old man in an old house. Object there was none. Compassion there was none. I loved the old man. He had never given me insult. He had never wronged me. For his gold I had no desire. I think it was his eye. Whenever it fell upon me, my blood ran cold. And so, by degrees, very, very gradually, I made up my mind to take the life of the old man and thus rid myself of the eye forever. Hey, good. Yes, sir. I brought you some water. Thank you. I think that's enough wood for now. Thank you so much, Edgar. I would have done it myself, but I fear that my back won't allow it at my age. Well, you know I don't mind helping you, sir. Why don't you come over to dinner tonight? It's so lonely in this house by myself. I think I will. Is there anything you may need that I can bring for you? Nice bottle of spirits. Come in, Edgar. Come in. Ah, I see you brought a bottle. Good, good. You'll help us wash down this poor excuse for a stew that I prepared. Come. I've had this bottle for a while. Never really had use for it. Well, today its use will be to cover up this dinner. Now, let me get this too, sir. Oh, thank you, Edgar. How do you like it? It's quite good. Is my cooking that bad? Oh no, sir. That was from the spirits. I don't drink much. Ah, uh, I see. I like a nice drink. It helps warm me old bones. How about a nice game of chess after dinner? Is there something?
something wrong? No, I just... I thought I saw a bug in my stew. It was nothing. It was just a bit of spice. It may be the pepper. It gives me a jump sometimes. Well, I'm full. Is your stomach satisfied? Yes. Yes, I am. Now, please, let me. Oh, thank you. I'll go set up the chessboard. Uh... Now, at this point, you may fancy me a madman. Madmen know nothing. You should have seen me. You should have seen how wisely I proceeded. With what caution. With what foresight. I was never kinder to the old man than during the whole week before I killed him. Every night, just about midnight, I turned the latch of his door and opened it, oh, so gently. I moved very, very slowly so that I may not disturb the old man's sleep. I did this for seven long nights, every night at midnight but I always found the eye closed. So it was impossible for me to do the work, for it was not the old man that vexed me, but his evil eye. Upon the eighth night, I was more than usually cautious opening the door. Never before had I felt the extent of my powers of my own sagacity. I could scarcely contain my feelings of triumph. To think, there I was, opening the door, little by little. I chuckled, and perhaps he heard me, for he moved on his bed suddenly as if startled. For a whole hour, I did not move a muscle. The old man's terror must have been extreme. I could hear the old man's heart. It increased my fury as the beating of a drum stimulates the soldier into courage. It grew louder and quicker with every instant. The old man was dead. I removed the pillow and examined the body. He was stone dead. The eye will trouble me no more. If you still think me mad, you will no longer once I describe to you the wise precautions I took for the concealment of the body. The night waned, and I worked hastily, but in silence. First of all, I dismembered the body. Then I cut off the head, and the arms, and then the legs. I then took up all three planks from the flooring of the chamber and deposited all between the scantlings. then replaced the board so cleverly, so cunningly, that no human eye, not even his, could have detected anything wrong. There was nothing to wash out. The tub has caught all. <laughs>
When I had made an end of these labors, it was four o'clock, still dark as midnight. And as the bell sounded the hour, there came a knocking on the door. to open it with a light heart. For what had I now to fear? Good evening. Good evening. My name is Detective Rames, and this is Detective Robert. Hello, officer. Please, won't you come in? Yes, thank you. Tonight, a neighbor passing in the night heard a yell, and they were a little suspicious. The shriek heard was my own. In a dream. Mr. Westgill was out in the country visiting his grandchildren. He asked me to look after the house. Do you mind if we take a look around, Mr. Hop, Edgar Hop? Please, feel free to look around. My head ached, and I felt a ringing in my ears, but they still chatted. The ringing became more distinct. I talked more freely to get rid of the feeling, but it continued and gained definiteness until I found that the noise was not within my ears. It was a low, dull, quick sound. I talked quickly and argued about trifles, but the noise steadily increased. Why would they not be gone? It grew louder and louder and louder, and still the men chatted pleasantly. Was it possible they heard not? <laughs> oh, mighty God, no. No. They heard. They suspected. They knew. They were making a mockery of my horror. Villains! Dissemble no more! I admit the deed. Tear up the blanks! Here! Here! It's the beating of his hideous heart! Why then would you say that I am mad? <laughs> 